oil isn't enough. This country needs an all-out, all-of-the-above strategy that develops every available source of American energy. Did you know the U.S. has the greatest fossil fuel reserves in the world? That's because of shale gas. We have twice as much natural gas in this country, is that what you're saying, than they have oil in Saudi Arabia? I'm trying to very clearly say exactly that. The development of natural gas will create jobs and power trucks and factories that are cleaner and cheaper, proving that we don't have to choose between our environment and our economy. This really was a very bleak jobs report. Unemployment rate up, the number of unemployed Americans up, average hours worked down, average hourly pay slightly down. As one economist put it, stop looking for the silver lining. There isn't any. A strategy that's cleaner, cheaper, and full of new jobs. Pennsylvania currently has enough gas production that it can be energy self-sufficient and even export gas. In nine years time it should be able to supply one quarter of this country's total natural gas needs. It's also been creating jobs according to the State Department of Labor. 72,000 jobs have been created by the gas industry in just the past 18 months and the Penn State report says this year 156,000 jobs will somehow be impacted by the gas industry. We have a supply of natural gas that can last America nearly 100 years. And my administration will take every possible action to safely develop this energy. The Marcellus is a huge, huge opportunity. It uh, is already recognized as the most successful, largest, and most economic, repeatable, large-scale gas play in the United States potentially could be one of the largest gas fields in the world. Because America will develop this resource without putting the health and safety of our citizens at risk. So, this will be this county, Washington County, Westmoreland County, then you go to the Northeast, we are on the hot spot. It's, we are now an industrial gas field. Green County is commonly referred to as the cornerstone of the Keystone State. It is therefore the foundation on which the state is set. It is indispensable to Pennsylvania. It has earned the title of cornerstone through its continuous efforts to support the state and its industry. Historically, Green County's most notable contributions have been those involving natural resource extraction. Green County lies atop the Pittsburgh Coal Seam, which has been referred to as the world's most valuable single deposit. The bituminous coal that was found in this coal bed was of particularly high quality and ideal for coke production. Large-scale mining began in this region in 1860. The true rapid growth in this area's coal industry began in the early 1900s, though. In 1902, Green County established its first large-scale commercial mining operation, the Dilworth Mine. This was a point in history that would significantly change the way of life in Green County. Primarily agricultural in nature until this point, it was joked that there were more sheep than people in Greene County. 
However, with the sudden onslaught of the coal industry, the economy quickly shifted gears. Coal largely powered the Industrial Revolution. As demand for energy continued to rise, so did the call for more miners to fuel the revolution. Increasing numbers of southern and eastern European immigrants moved to Pennsylvania to be a part of the mining workforce. Throughout the 1930s, Pennsylvania was the nation's top producer of bituminous coal. The influx of immigrants produced a low-wage workforce that the coal operators could control. These miners and their families were seen purely as a source of labor. As more workers moved into the region, the coal operators were forced to build towns to take in the influx of new people. Thus, within these patch towns, as they were called, life revolved entirely around the coal industries. Eleanor Muzik was the daughter of Slavic immigrants who lived in Bobtown, located in Greene County. Her father worked in the mine, and she recounted her experience in 1987 in a publication titled The History of Bobtown. The company owned you, your family, the food in your mouth, the clothes on your back, the roof over your head, and they used the violence and the threat of violence to keep their workers docile. Churches in the coal fields preached strict adherence to the company's every whim and denounced the emerging trade unions as a dangerous foreign influence. If you were obedient, if you worked until you dropped, God would provide for you after you died. The combination of the religious incentive and the omnipresence of the coal industry in the lives of the miners kept them and their families relatively obedient. Many of the miners were afraid of the repercussions of speaking out, brutality, rape, and sometimes murder. This fear created a sort of complacency among the workers. Coal extraction has continued in Greene County up until present day. According to the county's Department of Economic Development, it is currently Pennsylvania's top producer of bituminous coal. The continued presence of the coal industry and the legacy of violence has notably impacted the region. It is particularly evident in the way in which many Greene County citizens have responded to the influx of the natural gas industry into the region. It's a cultural, I think a lot of it is historically cultural. This end of the county, particularly back in the day of Andrew uh, Carnegie, it was immigrants. Couldn't speak English, they feared uh, everyone, they feared the coal industry. You know, the coal industry built this town. Bobtown was built by Shanapin, the folks that owned Shanapin Mine. Right. In the 20s, 1920s. Yeah, yeah. in the 1920s. And populated to a large extent by immigrants, who's, uh, who's, uh, many of whom you know, were, were, had somewhat limited English speaking back abilities. But they did, they did have, as opposed to West Virginia, very quickly had unions, which yeah. I'm sure that the mine operators regretted <laughs> as a result. But if you have a company that's going to build you a house, and right over there you passed it was the company store that's going to give you script to buy food, you're not going to say too much about any kind of problems <laughs> that may you societal problems that you there may be you may be having because that could easily be taken away from you in any given moment so it's um it's almost like uh if you ask me it's like living under a fear regime <laughs> most of these people are one generation removed from the men coming in and beating your father up if he resisted the coal company or if, he picketed, an uncle who or if he picketed <laughs> in because <leg>. of <laughs> in unions or something like this. They are only one generation removed from that. It's well, their parents and their uncles and aunts that were abused by the coal company. So you go to these people and you say, you have to resist this company that is putting things into your water. And they go, well, why? We can't do anything. They're just going to run roughshod over us. And they're, you know, beginning to see that maybe this isn't the coal industry. Maybe we're not going to get shot. But that's still come up in meetings. If we resist these people, are they going to come after us with shotguns? Is somebody going to threaten us? That's actually come up as a subject in meetings. Yeah. The ever-present fear of the coal industry impacted the initial reaction to the entrance of the natural gas industry in the early 2000s. However, as development has progressed, citizens of Greene County in southwestern Pennsylvania have begun to realize the most notable aspect of this Marcellus Shale gas boom, its reach. In the past, coal operators were fairly small operations and they were able to 
go in and build a mine in one valley and uh, all the impact was in that valley and all the other people were just told, stay away, forget about it. It's not you, it's just impact in this area. Marcellus impacts everybody almost at the same time. It affects the, the water supply, the drilling goes on pretty uniformly throughout the region. So the opposition, instead of being just in one community, the opposition to the negative aspects of it um, are much more widespread in Marcellus than they are in, in coal. The change makes people uncomfortable and there's been enormous change. And you can't go into town without the subject coming up. Anywhere. Traffic Anywhere. lights. Traffic, the traffic. We've had to triple the number the of traffic cars lights that we've had trucks before. that run you off the road. <laughs> just all sorts of different things. So it's changed. Come up. So it's just We're every. We're used to it. Constantly. It's, it's constantly on everyone's mind. In these smaller rural towns, all eyes have turned towards Marcellus Shale. Those who have struggled to make ends meet in these areas initially viewed this industry as an opportunity for profit, either by working on the rigs or by leasing their land. The Marcellus Shale play has been touted as a way for America to create thousands of new jobs and to gain energy independence. The area has always been desperate for jobs. The coal industry has always uh, helped maintain that stance, and I don't know exactly how they do it. I'm not going to go, you'd have to write another term paper on that. But uh, anything that, that says jobs or the potential of, of income or money is met with, with open arms. It, you know, a couple people that never had anything have financially benefited from the Marcellus, but most of the folks that are making money off of Marcellus are people that already had money. It, and it's really, when we look at overall all the community, we have, you know, as of 2009, we had a 17.1% poverty rate. We have 19% of the population in Greene County that can't make ends meet. We are, we've lost 20% of our population. Um, I think we're going downhill and a lot of people don't realize how fast we're sliding. I think they just, they're so used to it. I mean, the, the, many people in the county are not able to get the better paying jobs that are associated with drilling. Uh, so they're, it's necessary to impact workers. So uh, who profits? Uh, lawyers, accountants, banks, to some extent, um, hotels, restaurants, people, <laughs> the businesses that cater to uh, itinerant workers. When the Marcellus Shale gas boom initially hit Pennsylvania, many of the native residents did not have the technical knowledge and experience to get the higher paying jobs on the gas rigs. Therefore, many of the gas companies brought up experienced workers from areas where drilling had already taken place such as Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Many citizens of Greene County felt as though, again, they are being sacrificed so that others could make a profit. When, that, when this boom is over, and we had this boom before, in the, what, 20s? There, there was a boom in the 20s. There was, of course, World War II. Uh, and uh, there was, the mines, coal mine was open again in, here in the 60s. So there were ups and downs, yeah. Yeah. but in between there was uh, depressions. Yeah. Call it what you will, collusion, interaction, let's be nice. Interaction between the DEP and the extraction industry in Pennsylvania by, by order of the legislature and by practice has been complete. They know each other by first name. I called the DEP and asked them a question, and the lady calls back in an hour, and she said, she said, so-and-so said this. I said, I've never met anybody by that name in your office. She goes, oh, no, I called so-and-so, first in name, in the company, and got your answer for you. And she said, that was easier than finding my guys. Okay? So that's just a start, okay? And so you've got enormous collusion between regulators and the industry.
to the point where the landowner um, is way distant. The um, DEP, we asked DEP why they weren't enforcing the don't the not the don't dump site, you know, things for these trucks that were dumping into the stream and into other things. And the man told my husband that he had been instructed not to encumber any of the trucks well, that's the state from police. the extraction of the The state people. police. Yeah. On the QT, the state policeman said, we've been directed to let them do their job. To not cite them. That's the state of Pennsylvania. Definitely. We're we're literally, literally sacrificed. Uh, Let's I, see what they do yeah. in Greene County, and we'll decide. Their so, job from the governor on down, and we're not cynical here because I kid you not, we document everything we do, and I meet with the, with two, the other two leaders every Monday, and we make sure what we're saying. And I know this is being recorded, recorded, but from the governor on down. The job right now for Pennsylvania is let them put in as many wells as they can to get what's called a critical mass of drilling infrastructure. The Marcellus Shale provides Pennsylvania with a great opportunity to become the natural gas supplier for the rest of the world. This one industry has brought 72,000 new hires to Pennsylvania. I want to build on this progress and I support many of the recommendations that achieve this goal. So that they will be an integral part of the economy of Pennsylvania for the jobs. If we have to sacrifice our forests, they'll grow back, okay? If we have to sacrifice some law enforcement and some, some uh, people, that's okay. And Pardon me? We got lots of people. We got lots of people. And besides that, we have enough votes that we'll be in power, okay? Because remember, we don't, like I say, we don't have a voting block here. So the, the job right now for Pennsylvania is to get, it's entrepreneurial. Let them come in, set it up, the trees will grow back. This generation may gripe and fight and go to the hearings and everything else, but they're going to die. And we'll give jobs to the young people. So, and that's the way, you know, that's the way it goes. This hand, when I talk about this hand and glove thing, they're, they're all working collectively together to make sure that mining can occur and Marcellus Shale can occur. And we are the recipients, the, the citizens and the public are the recipients of um, the pollution. So that somebody in Connecticut Greenwich, Connecticut, in a gated community, in a gated community, is living very well with clean water. <laughs> this is not going away. They can drill Utica wells down through the same pad as Marcellus. So if you have fracking and all this kind of thing, it's going to go on for decades. It's not going to be and, and gone. So, this will be this county, Washington County, Westmoreland County, then you go to the Northeast, we are on the hot spot. It's, we are now an industrial gas field. And the landowners and the citizens, frankly, and I can back up everything I've said, I'll say, in the state of Pennsylvania are considered nothing compared to the industry. Green County is just one of the many counties that lies above the Marcellus Shale Formation. Across the state of Pennsylvania, many communities are being impacted by the natural gas industry. There is one that is an exception, though. Across the state from Green County lies Wayne in the northeasternmost corner. The overall community reaction has notably differed from that in Green County. The Delaware River Basin Commission has played a central role in the Marcellus Shale impact in Wayne County. The Delaware River Basin Commission, or DRBC, was established in 1961 as a government agency charged with overseeing the protection and management of the Delaware River watershed. The commission consists of representatives from Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, and the federal government. As the natural gas industry exploded into Pennsylvania, the DRBC was the organization in charge of distributing the essential water withdrawal permits to the drilling companies. 
However, they refuse to do so within their special protection waters that extend across the majority of the watershed. Thus, the DRVC in essence placed a moratorium on drilling within their boundaries. Most of Wayne County lies within these bounds. So while all of this has been taking place, what you have is the whole fracking nonsense that started with a whole bunch of fear-mongering, uh, differences in definition, apparent, apparent uncertainty regarding certain things.